I want to show you how to use the correlation tool in Microsoft Excel. Now this one's been around for a while. It probably has been around at least since the Excel 2007. Now first of all, you have to make sure your data analysis tools are on. If I pick on my data menu up top, data, then I can tell that my data analysis tools are not on because if they were, it would say the word data analysis over here on the right side of the window. So if they're not on, let me show you how to turn them on. I'll pick on file and I'll pick on options, file options. Now these are called add-ins. I'm going to pick on the word add-ins. And then you pick on the word go down here at the bottom of the window. Good. And then you make sure that you have the analysis tool pack checked like that. Now there's one that's called analysis tool pack VBA. And that would give you um, more functions when you do programming. But the one that I want to check this time is analysis tool pack. So I picked on file and then options. Then I picked on add-ins. Then I picked on go. On this one, you, you want to make sure this one is checked where it says analysis tool pack. I'll click on OK. Now notice on the right side of the data menu, I'll pick on data this time. Now it says data analysis, OK? Now I do have another video about the solver. If you, if you went to my page and you search for, uh, you went to my YouTube page and search for a solver, you'll find a video about that as well. Now I want to talk about the data analysis. We're going to click there. And you get this new window. Now I'm going to make videos about some of these other tools. But this time we're going to use one that's called correlation. The correlation means you're going to compare at least two sets of numbers and you want to see if one number influences another number. All right. If there is there some kind of correlation. Now, in this case, I want to see if the number of absences somehow influenced the final grade. You would think that if the absences go up, if they have more absences, then the final grade would go down. And if there have fewer absences, then the final grade would go up. That's just kind of a loose theory. I want to demonstrate one way, one way or the other, and we could do that with a correlation. Now here I'm comparing two sets of numbers. You can actually do, you know, multiple rows of numbers or multiple columns and see how one column might relate to another. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and pick on correlation right there and we'll get this window. I'll click on OK. All right. Now it's asking for the input range. Now in this case, the input range is going to be C3 through J4. Now that could be many, many columns or many, many rows. In this case, it'd be C3 through J4. Now, if you think about it, the data is going across. So the data is in rows. Uh, obviously, if it were in columns, we would pick on columns there. Now look at column C, which is the first column and the labels are in the first column and you want to check that box. The input range is looking for numbers only, but it'll, it'll make one exception. Here we have the labels in the first column. Make sure you would check that. Now, on the other hand, if your data was grouped by columns, then all the rows have to be numbers except for the first row. And then the labels will be in the first row and you would check that choice over here. So it all depends on how your data is laid out. And then we're going to put the result in a new worksheet. All right, so for the input range, I have C3 through J4 grouped by rows, labels in the first column, and we're going to put the result in a new worksheet. Now, before I click on OK, I want to tell you what's going to happen here. It's going to go to a different sheet, and we're going to get a number between negative 1 and positive 1. All right, so if you get a negative number, that means as the number of abscesses go up, the final grade goes down. It has a negative or a reverse effect. And the closer it is to negative one, the stronger the correlation is. On the other hand, if we get a positive number, that means as the number of abscesses go up, the final grade also goes up. It has a positive correlation, and the closer it is to positive one, then the stronger the correlation is. So I want to make sure you understand that because every time you run this correlation, it's going to give you a number between negative one and positive one. I'm going to click on OK. All right, so this is what this is telling us is the absences and the absences obviously kind of uh, know themselves out. 
the final grade and the final grade nulls themselves out. But the one that we're looking for is the way the absences influences the final grade. And we have negative 0.94. That's a negative number and it's really close to negative one. So that means as the number of absences go up, the final grade goes down because it's a negative number. And because it's really close to negative one, it means it's a pretty strong correlation. Let's see if the numbers bear it out. This person was absent six times and their final grade was 82. This person was absent two times and their final grade was 86. This person was absent 15 times and their final grade was 43. So as you can see, as the number of absences go up, the final grade goes down. And we just demonstrated that with the correlation. All right. So remember, you can have multiple columns and multiple rows to see how each row or column affects a different row or column. But at least now you have an understanding of how to use the correlation and what those numbers mean. Now, let's make a chart out of this. I'm going to highlight this data. The chart that will work really good is the following, a scatter chart. If I, if I pick on the insert menu, we come over here and I'll pick on the pull down for the scatter chart and I'll pick on this first one. Okay, now let me show you how to read this. The, um, the blue dots are the final grade. The X axis is the number of absences. So you can see as the final, as the number of absences goes up, the final grade goes down. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's see if we can um, make that maybe, um, we'll put the legend on there. So I'll say add chart element. I mean the data label is what I meant to say, data label. And I'll say uh, above the line. Good. Now let's see if we can do uh, maybe, um, maybe a trend line. Yeah, you can that the trend line really demonstrates that as the, the number of absences goes up, the final grade goes down. Let's see if any one of those are different. Now, I kind of like this uh, trend line over here. That So that really shows as the number of absences goes up, the final grade goes down. Now, there's one outlier here. This person right over here. Um, so that person had five absences, and yet their final grade was not uh, 90. So that's this one over here. So if, if that one was... If that wasn't there, then it probably would be close to 100% or a negative one correlation. But um, so I showed you how to run the correlation. Then a good chart to represent the data would be what we call a scatter chart.